chariots and some in horses some trust in chariots and some in horses yeah some trust in chariots and some in horses some trust in chariots and some in horses yeah Come on and stand up with us and clap your hands for this week's Rockstar Bible Study Teacher! 
Good evening, rock friends. My name is Miss Erica, and I am your rock star teacher for this evening, as well as Deaconess at the Fountain of Praise. Thank you so much for joining this evening. I am so excited to learn a little more about Jesus with you today. Well, let's get started with a recap of this month's theme. Can anyone tell me what this month's theme is? Go ahead, if you can remember it, and put it in the chat. Well, that's right. The theme that we have been exploring this month is unusual, exploring the miracles of Jesus. For today's lesson, our big idea is Jesus gives sight to the spiritually blind. And the scripture reference that you can read at home with your parents is John chapter 9, verses 1 through 41. That's John chapter 9, verses 1 through 41. Our memory verse is, Then Jesus told him, I entered this world to render judgment, to give sight to the blind, and to show those who think that they see that they are blind. Now that's John chapter 9, verse 39, English Standard Version. Okay, we're going to watch a video called The Man Born Blind. And in this video, we are going to learn a little bit more about the miracles that Jesus did here on earth, as well as his healing power and his compassion for mankind. While you watch the video, I'd like for you to listen out for the answers to these three questions. Hopefully you have a pen and some paper so you can take them down. Question number one. Jesus told his disciples that the man was born blind for what reason? Question number two. How did the people who knew the blind man react when they learned that he could see? Question number three, why did the blind man think that Jesus was from God? Okay, let's watch the video together. One day, as Jesus and his disciples were out walking, they saw a man who was born blind. The disciples asked Jesus, Rabbi, why was this man born blind? Was it because of his own sins or his parents' sins? Jesus responded, It was not because of his sins or his parents' sins. This happened so the power of God could be seen in him. Jesus spit on the ground made mud with the saliva, and spread the mud over the blind man's eyes. Jesus told the man, Go wash yourself in the pool of Siloam. The blind man did as Jesus told him, and when he returned, he could see. His neighbors and others who knew him couldn't believe it was him, but the former blind beggar kept telling them, Yes, it's me. They asked him, Who healed you? What happened? He told them, The man they called Jesus made mud and spread it over my eyes and told me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash yourself. I did as he told me, and now I can see. The man's neighbors asked where Jesus was, but he did not know. Then they took the man who had been blind to the Pharisees, a group of religious leaders. When the man told the Pharisees about what had happened, some of them said, This man Jesus is not from God, for he is working on the Sabbath. Others said, But how could an ordinary sinner do such miraculous signs? The man who had been blind told them he thought Jesus must be a prophet. The Jewish leaders refused to believe that the man had been blind and could now see, so they called in his parents. 
The man's parents were afraid of the Jewish leaders because they had threatened to kick out anyone from the synagogue who said Jesus was the Messiah. So when the Pharisees questioned them, they confirmed that he was their son and that he was born blind. But they did not know how he could see or who had healed him. They told the Pharisees to ask him for themselves. He is old enough to speak for himself, they said. For a second time, the man appeared before the Pharisees to answer their questions about his blindness and how he had been healed. The man answered, I was born blind. He healed my eyes. No one has ever been able to do that before. If this man were not from God, he couldn't have done it. The angered Pharisees replied, Who are you to teach us, sinner? And they threw him out of the synagogue. When Jesus heard what had happened, he found the man and explained to him, I entered this world to judge, to give sight to the blind, and to show those who think they see that they are blind. Some Pharisees who were standing nearby heard him and asked, Are you saying we're blind? Jesus replied, If you were blind, you wouldn't be guilty. But you remain guilty because you claim you can see. Wow, wasn't that an awesome video? Isn't it so amazing to see that God can do anything, even restoring sight to the blind? Well, let's see if you were able to answer the questions from earlier. If you haven't already, you can go ahead and answer them in the chat. Question number one was, Jesus told his disciples that the man was born blind, for what reason? Well, Jesus told his disciples that the man was born blind so the power of God could be seen in him. Now, this just means that sometimes things happen to us that are not our fault or the fault of our parents. Um, sometimes God just wants to use us to show his power through us. Question number two. How did the people who knew the blind man react when they learned that he could see? The people who knew the blind man couldn't believe it was really him. And they asked him, how could this happen? Could you imagine growing up with someone who was blind or maybe couldn't walk? And then one day, all of a sudden, they could walk and they could see and maybe even they could run? That would be unbelievable for all of us. Question number three. Why did the blind man think that Jesus was from God? The blind man thought that Jesus was from God because no one had ever been able to heal a blind person before. Well, it's definitely amazing to be able to see God's power working in your life. Isn't it cool how there are just some things that not even mom or dad or ourselves can do, but only God can? Well, when he does miraculous things, it's good for us to acknowledge him and thank him for all that he's doing in our lives. Well, let's take a look at the next video before we wrap up for today. With love and affection, the Apostle Paul wrote to the young church in Rome, To those who are loved by God and called to be his very own, I am eager to tell you the good news of your Messiah. In this letter, Paul would reveal things about God that could be understood only through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, because it is the power of God to save everyone who believes. Paul reminded the Romans that, long ago, 
something terrible had happened. Sin entered into our perfect world. It all began when Adam and Eve disobeyed God, bringing a dark curse over everything God had created. The special relationship that God had with his creation was broken. From that point in history, the curse of sin was passed down from person to person, affecting every man, woman, and child. After the fall, people were born slaves to sin. Paul wrote, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Sin broke everything, including friendship with God. People no longer trusted God, and they rebelled against Him, becoming hopelessly lost in the darkness of sin. Peace and happiness were replaced with fear and worry. And there was good reason to worry. The curse of sin constantly put healthy people at risk of sickness and disease. But worst of all, sin caused everything to die and be forever separated from the goodness and glory of God. Of this awful truth, Paul wrote, The wages of sin is death. But from the very beginning, even before the world was created, God's loving thoughts were toward His lost creation, and He had a plan to win them back. Because death was the only payment for sin, God would send His Son, Jesus, to take the place of the lost who were sick with sin. Jesus showed the most amazing act of love and friendship by dying for the very ones who had disobeyed Him. Paul wrote, Most people would not die for a righteous person, although some might be willing to die for a person who does a lot of good things. But God showed His love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God came to save us just as He had promised. Jesus' death made a way for people to be forgiven and for every sin to be carried far away and forgotten forever. There is no other power on heaven or earth that can save people from sin and death. By the name of Jesus, all people can be saved. God will rescue anyone who cries out to Him and asks for help. Paul wrote, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. When people believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, it changes everything. By faith, they will confess Jesus as their Lord and ask Him to lead their lives. Believers understand the great price Jesus paid for sin and humbly give their lives to God. This is a big decision and one that can be very difficult. Following Jesus means turning away from sin and selfishness and instead trusting God for every part of life. Paul wrote, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Sin makes God angry because it hurts and destroys the creation he loves, which is why God has promised to punish sin. Believers don't need to fear God because they are forgiven. God sees those who believe in Jesus as his own children and in his eyes, his children are righteous and perfect. The good news of Jesus is that sin's wages have been paid, and the gift of salvation belongs to God's children. Paul wrote, Now there is no longer punishment for those who are in Christ Jesus. Instead, you have been given the spirit of adopted children, so that now you cry to him, Abba, Father. Jesus Christ? It definitely is. Well, I pray that you all have had an opportunity to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. 
If not, today is the perfect day to ask God to come into your life so that you can be saved. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for opening our eyes to the truth that is you. Help us to see you in every aspect of our lives. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I've enjoyed this time with you. That's it for today's lesson. I hope that we can see you here again next week. Have a blessed day.